What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we're continuing on yet again with our series of our compilation videos of advanced side mount and penetration techniques. And today's video we're going to look at a dock series that we go up underneath. And it doesn't really seem like it's that great, uh, really adventurous going up underneath the dock system. However, there's a lot of benefit to practicing skills up underneath docks, especially when it comes to buoyancy and trim. And we're going to look and see how buoyancy and trim can affect us when we go up underneath the dock system. How does this apply to you in the real world? Well, you may be swimming up under a dock, maybe it's your local environment, or it's a great way to navigate, if you will, into tighter corridors, maybe if you're doing cavern or advanced trek or even a cave course. This is really going to teach you how to have proper propulsion while in an overhead environment, especially when you're in some type of restriction as well. So let's go ahead and start today's video. And like I said, this is just a, a dock series at Lake Phoenix that we're swimming up underneath. And you're going to see two divers go through. What I want you to pay attention to, though, is, is as I go through, I want you to look at what happens behind me. I want you to look to see if it stirs it up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play here, and you can see I'm kind of negotiating of how I'm going to get through here, what's the kick pattern that I should use. Now don't pay too close attention to my cylinders, my cylinders are slightly out of trim here, but what I do want you to notice is my feet are staying up above my body, I'm not stirring up the mud that's underneath there, and I'm not creating a hazardous situation for my dive buddy who will be coming through after me. Now, if you do see any debris or any turbidity coming down, that's actually from all the um, all the moss and stuff that's up above us, all the algae that's above us. So as I was kicking, I was actually touching the top of the dock there, and that's what you're seeing actually uh, kind of make the water more turbid. It's not actually me stirring up the bottom because I'm not, I don't have any downward force with my fins. By having a proper uh, finning technique, I'm able to keep that up out of the water. But there you can see David, my dive buddy, he's coming through right after me, and he's still got good and clear visibility to actually swim through. We're gonna watch that one more time, and let's really pay close attention to the finning, or the finning techniques that we're using, or the patterns that we're kicking with, and just see if there's anything that we can learn from these finning techniques as well. So I hit play again here, and there you can see I was kind of negotiating where I wanted to go through at. I wanted to see if there's any hazards, maybe any nails or anything hanging down from the boards there. I'm staying low enough that my head's not hitting up on the top, and I'm actually high enough that even though my tanks are slightly out of trim there, they're not dragging across the bottom, and it's very easy. The reason they're dragging here, I just got these tanks filled so they're a little heavy, and I was actually clipped off to the long, wrong D-ring on my harness. But not a big deal. As you can see, there's nothing really coming up off the bottom. All that turbidity is being created from me touching the top there. And then of course, as my dive buddy comes in, we're using the same finning techniques, uh, basically a modified frog kick here. We're staying horizontally trimmed. We're keeping our arms out in front of us. We're constantly being vigilant of any hazards that may be above us. And we're just working through it. And that's one thing that I really enjoy about, uh, say, Lake Phoenix. There's so many things that you can practice your skill sets. And these docks, everybody thinks, well, these little platforms or these docks that are underwater, that they're simply just being used for divers to go up on and do their skill sets, but they're so much more beneficial to even side mount divers because they create these smaller tight restrictions that really make you practice your trim and your buoyancy skills as well by simply trying to go up underneath them without stirring up the bottom. So it makes good training grounds for say new divers on top and then of course side mount divers down below. But guys I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know this wasn't nowhere near as exciting as some of the other ones but like I said it's all about training and constantly training every single dive you make and when you got a little tight little restriction like this Try to go through it. See if you can go through it. Now, the cool thing here is, yeah, it is an overhead environment, but we could have come out either side of it very easily, but it did give us a great chance to practice our buoyancy and our trim. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you got any questions, drop me a comment down below. We'll try to answer it the best we can. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.